This episode of the Sleepcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Med Canadian will be in Cary, Ohio at the Shrine Cafeteria from 4 to 7 p.m. this Thursday. If you can't make it Thursday, you can go to the Millstream Credit Union on False Story Avenue in Finley, Ohio this Friday from 11 to 3 p.m. If you can't make it there either, you got Sunday to head on over to the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery on Tiffin Avenue in Finley from 11 to 6 p.m. Miss any of that? Check the Mad Canadians Facebook and Twitter page for more information. Mad Kenny Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. They're a micro batch hand roaster. All of your coffee is fresh to order. They're Ohio based. Um, they're based out of Perrysburg, which is near Toledo. Um, integrity is the core value of everything they do. So that's why you're getting your fresh roast, because they're not going to sell you stale beans. And that's why all of their beans are organic. And that's why all of their beans are fair trade certified, which means, you know, your beans are of the highest moral standard. Because, again, beans and coffee and just a company in general based on integrity. What else would you expect from a, from a Marine? Uh, they import all of their high quality coffee beans direct from farms in Colombia, Brazil, U uh, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far off lands. Um, you can save money with a subscribe and save service. They have gift cards, free shipping over $50. All that and more can be found at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. A second is going everybody you say nomad. What's what what are the two subscriptions? What's up, YouTube? This is our special YouTube and Discord only section of the show. Uh the first was the Odin, and now you've added the Thor. Are you gonna add the Loki to that trio? I'm not normally a light roast guy but i love that loki something fierce aha uh -huh, aha uh -huh. i was in i was anticipating you were going to say that and i was on top of it i'm not a big light roast guy either but the loki the loki's damn fine this isn't even an advertisement still this is just me talking all right Kyle, let's let's not uh let's not dilly dally any longer we need to get we need to get to know our enemy We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right here, Al. How are you doing today, Jared? You know, Kyle, it's been a week. Um, I, I think I'm doing okay, though. Um, it's 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 been a week uh, filled with uh, losses and rumors and and other things. We spent a good section of our secret Patreon show which comes out on Wednesdays, our, our Patreon only show, uh, talking about all the coaching rumors and all of that. So if you want to uh, listen to that and you're a patron, you can go on Patreon and figure that out. If not, uh, if you're not a Patreon, if you're not a patron on Patreon, then uh, you're going to have to consider signing up to hear our, our thoughts on all the coaching change rumors. Um, but that's not what we're focused on today. We're focused today on Tulsa. Which means yep. what, Kyle? Well, before we do that, I think I think every day, I think every day that gets that goes by here, I think I think the wound or the the um that that hurt diminishes a little bit every day here. So I'm just I think I think seeing the Buckeyes hit the field again will really smooth smooth that out for us all. Yeah, exactly. There's a <laughs> emoji that a nomad put in our um discord here it's the it's fine uh yeah. emoji or um gift, gift in there yeah exactly yeah. but yes jared it is now time to know our enemy i i you know I, 
we used to drop music right there, but we're so sort of YouTube focused now. I was still paused for it. I still paused as if I was going to put music there, but just just pretend like I played a snippet from the Rage Against the Machine song and we'll move on. Um, Kyle, I. How much time do we want to spend actually getting if we're being honest, if we're being real honest, how much time do we really want to spend getting to know Tulsa right now? Well, is this a is this a team that you want to discuss a lot? Who lost to an FCS school in Week One? No, sir. I mean, they they lost to an FCS school Week One. Um, they they turned around and had a real close game against Oklahoma State, which on the surface, on the surface, kind of sounds like oh, okay, five point game against Oklahoma State. Um, that being said. Oklahoma State almost lost to an FCS school. So what does that actually say? What does that actually say? Yep, um, exactly. Yeah. About yeah. either of those teams. All right. So just a little bit about our enemy, Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Uh, you, you, look, you look at this team here, Jared, and we, we talked a little bit before we hit the record button here. Kind of similar like Minnesota in terms of upperclassmen. You look down the list on this offense here. Senior, senior, graduate, senior, senior, sophomore, graduate, senior, graduate, junior. And then defense, it's all graduates and seniors except for one, maybe two there. So it's a very heavy, heavy upperclassmen often or team in general. Right. Uh, but they don't have... Minnesota's talent. Minnesota's no, not, recruiting not saying, not profile. Saying that at all. Just, yeah. I, I know you're not. I know you're not saying that. I know you know. I was just sort of continuing the thought that while, yes, they have upper, a lot of upperclassmen the way Minnesota did. Minnesota, ever since PJ Fleck came to town, has been recruiting at a improved level by Minnesota standards. So Tulsa has not been anywhere near probably I don't, I don't really know where they are based on their own standards but they're nowhere near minnesota's old standards let alone minnesota's new standard under under pj fleck on one hand you have ohio state who looks like they can't beat themselves right now and then on the other hand you have tulsa mm -hmm. you know and i don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves here but the spread, the spread's at 26 and a half points. And, you know, coming off of what we saw Ohio State, it, it kind of feels impossible that Ohio State's going to beat anyone by 26 points right now. Well, to be fair, to be fair, Jared, that 26 and a half, I know it's when we locked in our, our, uh, our, Slow picks. Um, picks are thank you are our spread our picks here it has moved down to 24 and a half it moved down two points right but we're yeah you know, but we're still picking it at 26 and a half um yep so if you're taking ohio state you're not getting a very good deal because these our our numbers get locked in on monday um but if you're taking tulsa mm -hmm. then you're getting an even better deal because you're getting two extra points yep question for you jared yeah you know what state Tulsa, University of Tulsa is in? I would assume Oklahoma. That is correct. I mean, unless there's a second Tulsa, <laughs> which I guess is possible. So there, there, there's your answer, Gangland, Oklahoma. It's actually not too far from the University of Oklahoma, if I remember. I actually have no idea where Norman is like geographically speaking within the state. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Um, back to talk back to Tulsa here. We won't spend too much time here, but you, you look at, you look at their offense here over the past two games, pretty, pretty balanced 187 in the air, 193 on the ground. That's a, um, they're led by, that's a, it's a real kind way of stating what averaging under 200 yards a game, especially in one of those teams with an FCS. The kindest word you could have found there was balance. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, it's it's definitely not definitely not a good team, especially when you it's a team that you lose to an FCS team of uh, who is it? UC Davis Aggies. UC Davis Aggies. Um, and like I said, they they do have a close game against Oklahoma State, but as I stated, Oklahoma State uh, was it like Missouri State or I, I forget who Oklahoma State struggled against the next week but mm-hmm. they appear to also be super um <laughs> they, they appear to be having a rough season too i guess is what i'm trying to take the long way of saying yep all right so let's is there anything anybody or anyone that you want to mention here to on eyes to keep an eye out for of uh, this um this toss of team again this game is 330 this Saturday on Fox Sports One. I mean, yeah, the again, the the question becomes, can Ohio State beat themselves? This is not a good Tulsa team. I I, I dare to say that there is zero chance in hell Ohio State loses this football game. And that's even based off of the shit show we saw in defense last week. There's just not a lot of talent here. Ohio State, if they want want to, could probably do nothing but throw bombs between their three wide receivers and just score points. So even if the defense completely falls on its face again, and even if this turns into some sort of shootout, Ohio State could still win this. Like Ohio State can still win this game like 56 to 42 if necessary. If it's that bad. If the defense is that bad, Ohio State could still score 50, 60 points against this Tulsa team. I have no fear about that. The point. So so the question is, what narrative do we want to tell here? Because I could get I could get right on the mic here, Kyle, and I could tell I could tell you a narrative that. Uh, Tulsa Tulsa's in for a shock because, you know, maybe they were hoping Ohio State was going to was just going to backpedal into this game coming off of a big Oregon victory and that they were just going to maybe try and get some stuff done, maybe try and shock something because Ohio State would have been. But now Ohio State's coming in angry and now Ohio State has something to prove. And now Ohio State's going to score 72 to zero on them. Because they're actually going into a Tulsa game with motivation and something to prove and blah, 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 blah. I could tell you that narrative if that's the narrative you want me to tell you. Could also tell you the narrative of how distracted Ohio State is right now. Mm-hmm. Ryan Day is allegedly, I'm going to lean into the word allegedly, allegedly shopping for defensive coordinators right now, or at the very least, some sort of high profile analyst consultant to come in and shadow defensive coordinate, to come in yeah, and assist with all of that. And again, it's all rumor and hearsay and, and and message board clatter, but yeah, I don't think I don't think we want to say too much more about that just because we did we did talk all about that in our Patreon episode, but right, I think I think in there I think we all agreed that trying to replace a defensive coordinator right now is near impossible. Well, the, and, the I, defensive... I, I, and I think I think at this point the best solution for Ohio State is to find some sort of consultant to help guide, to help steer the defense in the right direction. Ohio State as a university is very PR driven and they they don't like the idea of firing a court. When was the last time Ohio State fired a coach in the middle of a season? Uh, please, in the comments, let me know. When was the last time Ohio State fired a coordinator in the middle of a season? I got I got a double no idea down in the chat down there. And then a not sure to so we got we got we rounded it out with a not sure with a third response. So I don't see Carrick Holmes getting fired. Might they give play calling, defensive play calling to Matt Barnes? I think that's entirely possible. He he was a defensive coordinator for one year at Maryland. Um I don't care what the Bengals do, Stuart. 
the Bengals are not an example for anyone to follow. Um, so I, I again, we're I don't, I don't want to spend a ton of time talking about the coaching stuff. We did that on on our Patreon Wednesday episode. I'll, I'll just say I I believe the last time a coach was fired in mid season and technically this is ten, technically not mid season. The last time was probably the end of nineteen seventy eight. Yeah. And the, the the media and the public relations and all of that, that's that's just a whole different world as far as any of that stuff goes. Yep. All right. Um, let's see. Just some names here. Um they split the load quite a bit on uh two running backs, uh Shamari Brooks and uh Dinerick Price, both receiving 30 and 20 carries each. Um Wide receiver wise, um, they're led on by Colin Stokes, who has the most reception yards and receptions at six. So that tells you, I could tell you a lot there about how much passing this team really does. Um, but yeah, it's not really a good team this year. Not really a good team. Stuart, I would say that was a reassignment of duties and not a firing, which while I don't think a firing of Kerry Combs is currently on the table, I do think a reassignment of duties is 100% on the table. So, again, I could I could spin this narrative for you that Ohio State is hyper distracted right now and focusing on everything but also. Which typically equals a, a disaster for the actual football game, right? Tulsa's focused on Ohio State and Ohio State's focused on Ohio State. That's what's happening right now. Tulsa's focused on Ohio State. Ohio State's focused on Ohio State. Ohio State, don't don't even say that name in my chat, Nomad. Don't even say that name in my chat. Oh, I, I see what you're saying in relation to. Okay, I, I see what you're saying, but no, that was in the, that was definitely preseason. It wasn't the preseason by much, mind you, but it was it was absolutely the preseason. Yep. Um so uh, defense, defense defensively I, I think um two names you really need to keep an eye out for is their defensive end uh colin wick and their uh graduate transfer from texas a&m uh defense back um uh, uh traven fuller those will be two names to keep you out for if you want to keep an eye on anybody on the uh the tulsa it's it's really if we're if we're gonna spend any time talking about Tulsa, I think it's Shamari Brooks, Daneric Price, Kalon Stokes. It's their offensive guys. I think those are the names we need to learn. I think Ohio State's gonna do whatever they want to do on on their offensive side of the ball. Um, Great. making with all due respect to Tulsa, their defense fairly irrelevant in this equation. It's just up to Ohio State to execute. Um and quite frankly, it's also up to the defense to execute. It's just that we haven't seen their defense. We haven't seen the defense actually execute. Has the offense executed at the same consistency that we saw them do under Justin Fields? Of course not. Justin Fields was an anomaly and Justin Fields was a junior. And while, you know, I, I don't even want to get into it because there's 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 Quite frankly, way too much talk around C.J. Stroud right now. I think he's doing fine for a red shirt quarterback making his first two starts. I think he's playing absolutely fine. He's putting up crazy numbers. Now, do those crazy numbers say with absolute certainty that he's great? No, it doesn't. Does his crazy numbers say you're not allowed to criticize him? No, they don't. He's flawed. But he's a freshman. He's a redshirt freshman. Get over it. Yep. All right. Um, we'll go ahead and get into our our pro, pro predictions here. That's the word. We're, we'll go ahead and get our predictions right after we hear from our sponsors of the Sloopcast. Am I going first? You pause there. Yes. I assume that means you think I'm going first. Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, Kyle, what, what coffees have I not talked about recently? Um, let us do, let's do light roast. 
All right. So we have a medium light rice. It's called the Loki. Um, it's a wet process blend. It's much higher in caffeine than you might expect from a lighter roast. Um, low in acidity, rich tasting. Uh, it has it has a great smell. That's one of the things I love most about the Loki is is the smell it puts out. It will light up your entire house or whatever the whatever the smell equivalent of lighting up is. I, I don't know. Um, floral up your house? I don't know. Um, speaking of which, there is citrus and floral scents um, dominate this. It's 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 so <laughs> oh, Stuart, you bastard. Make me laugh in the middle of the ad read like that. Um, don't don't read the chat. YouTube people don't even read the chat. Audio people, you're lucky. Um, yeah, the Loki is maybe my favorite light roast. I, you know, no. The Loki is my favorite light roast I've ever had, period. I, I'm not I was talking. If you're watching on YouTube, you heard Nomad and I sort of chatting during the mysterious music break section of the of the YouTube show. If not, it's legitimately I don't like light roast. I don't like light roast coffees. I'm a I like medium roast a lot. Those are my favorite. I, I do like dark roast. I do drink dark roast fairly frequently. Light roast. Eh. It's just it's not even on my plate most of the time, except the Loki. The Loki is 100 percent the exception to that rule. But you can find the Loki. You can also find a uh, you can also find a coffee called a Thor and a coffee called an Odin, too, if you're into your Nordic gods. So you can check out those coffees and a ton more coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the American Canadian Barbecue Company. For those who missed it at the beginning, I will read off where the Mad Canadian will be this the rest of this weekend weekend. This Thursday, he will be at the Shrine Cafeteria in Cary from 4 to 7 p.m. He'll be at the Millstream Credit Union on Fostory Avenue this Friday in Finley, Ohio from 11 to 3. Or this Sunday, lunch and dinner time, he'll be at the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery on Tiffin Avenue in Finley again this Sunday from 11 to Two six. Forget anything that I said here. You can find this and much more over at the Med Canadian Barbecue Company social media pages of Facebook and Twitter. Med Canadian Barbecue Company, who is the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. Okay, Kyle. It's time to get into some predictions, and we'll do some Ask Sloopcast questions. Um, Ohio State player to watch. Who do you have? I have Thayer Munford. He's supposed to be your leader. He's supposed to be your guy to lean on for this offensive line. They looked very flat footed last week. I, you, you got your leaders have to be vocal. They have to lead. I, I want Thayer Munford to set the example and for the rest of the slobs to follow foot. So I got Thayer Munford. You're given that O patch for a reason. It's time to earn it. And on the other side of that ball, but Kyle, you and I are on the same absolute same wavelength. I just went on the other side of the ball because, quite frankly, it's the defense that's struggling. You need to lean on your leadership. Who's the, who should be the leader on that defense? But Haskell Garrett. He's on a defense filled with young players. That that's your senior. That's your fifth year senior. Haskell Garrett. It's time to pull that team together. It's time to be the grown up in the room, since apparently some of the coaches don't know how to be. It's time to be the grown up in that room, Haskell Garrett, and take charge. Yep, 100 percent. So and if you want to one of the, the things that Tulsa actually brings to this game is a really nice pair of running backs. If you're going to stop the run game, it has to start up front and in the middle. And Haskell, that's your spot of the field. It's 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 time to light things up, buddy. Let's go. Yep. All right. Enemy player of the watch for Tulsa here. I got the senior running back, Shamari Brooks. And who do you have, Jared? Oh my Kyle. We we we're once again we are in sync. Um I have Daneric Pri uh Daneric Prince, rather. Um once again, I think they have a really nice tandem of running backs. I like Prince a little bit more, but Brooks is their senior. Um, you'll probably see them both play. And quite frankly, through the first two games, it kind of looks like anyone 
on God's green earth can could run a hundred yards against Ohio State right now. So it's it's time for Ohio State to prove me wrong in saying that. It's time for them to shut me up in saying that. I dare you. <laughs> Please yep. shut me up. Because as it looks right now, it looks like both of these guys could get 100 yards on Ohio State's defense because they they can't stop the run, period. Yep. So if you want to win this game, it has to start with shutting down not just my player to watch in Prince, but also Kyle's player to watch in Brooks. Mm -hmm. Uh, Key matchup here. I I think uh, mine is probably the obvious that everybody has talked about since the end of the Ohio State-Oregon game. Coaching changes. What has changed from Saturday afternoon to this Saturday? What on the D, especially on the defensive side, what's changed? Now, offensively, yeah, I think some of the play calling on key third downs, fourth downs could be changed too. I think some of those play callings could improve. But on that defensive side, we heard Coach Day, not his normal self, um, seemed a little heaved off what changes are going to happen you're you you're the man here you need to you need to steer this ship in the right direction make some changes what are those changes this weekend we'll find out yeah well well said kyle um when, when it comes down to it when it absolutely comes down to it it all goes to ryan day even when it's Kerry combs even when it's al washington or even when it's the offensive play calling from Kevin Wilson, it all it all comes back to Ryan Day. Um, and and ultimately, if changes need to be made this week or in the weeks after, that also comes down to Ryan Day. Yep. Uh, my key matchup is Ohio State's defense versus themselves. They must execute this. Tulsa team is not going to present a lot of unique challenges. It is Ohio State's responsibility. It kind of feels like in many ways a golfer. It's it's not the golfer isn't competing against the other golfers. The golfer is competing against the course. The golfer is com- is competing against themselves and just attempting to execute. If they execute, everything else will fall in line. That's what the defense has to do. The defense has to get past themselves and their own challenges with personnel and their own challenges with scheming and their own challenges with play calling and everything else. They have to get past themselves and achieve at the highest level with the right people, with the right play calls. Ohio State's a key matchup, Ohio State's defense versus themselves. All right, the spread as we lock them in is at 26 and a half. It's gone Stuart, down to Stuart, as sorry, we're... Sorry, sorry, Kyle. I apologize for interrupting you. Uh, Stuart's response to what I just said was seems like a losing proposition. That, I'm sorry, that was too funny not to give Stuart that. The, the spread is 26 and a half, which is where we lock them in. 24 and a half right now, but we're sticking with 26 and a half points. Jared. What do you have for the final score for this game? I have Ohio State scoring 48 points to Tulsa's 21 points. I want to state for the record, if Tulsa scores 21 points in this game, that is a failure. It is a unless unless maybe it's like a couple fourth quarter junk touchdowns against backups, in which case, whatever, that's fine. But if Tulsa scores 21 points, let's say through the first three quarters of the game, that is a failure on Ohio State's part. I want to state that that would be a failure on Ohio State's part, but that's also what I'm predicting. So mm-hmm. read into that what you will. I have very so 27 points. That's just over the spread here. I'm gonna get a lot of heat here. I have Ohio State 45, Tulsa 21. I don't know how much I don't know how much heat you're gonna get for not, not picking Ohio State. It's not a cover. I don't, I don't think Ohio State's going to cover. I don't think Ohio State's going to cover the 26 and a half. Even if it was a 24 and a half, I still didn't have them to cover. I, 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 Kyle, I don't think you're going to get a lot of heat for that. I think there's a, when, when we actually can review the sloop picks, because we have what, like 26 people. 
I believe, in our online slew picks this year. Last week, I think one person took Oregon. I think that's not going to be the case this time. I think a lot of people are going to not take Ohio State plus 26 and a half against anyone. And Tulsa basically is anyone in this case. Um, our guest picker this week uh, from the Discord server is Buckeye Born and Bred. Um, his final score prediction is Ohio State 41 and Tulsa 17. 41 17. Which is an easy cover. Uh, sh- no. Is it? No, it's not, actually. No, that is not a cover. I apologize. He's, he, he picked Ohio he's State to bo- cover, he's the but same then his... Well, in the no, same bo- yes, in Matt. Kyle's defense, <laughs> he we have his picks here, and he picked Ohio State to cover. But he did also uh, give us a score that doesn't have Ohio State covering. Listen, math is hard sometimes, you guys. It can be. That, All yes, right, that let's is get also into- a 24-point victory. Kyle, we're already at 31 minutes. Let's let's get to these Ask Sloopcast questions. And let's start off with Austin's over-unders. Sure. Stuart, there's still some time to get, to get us a couple names, buddy. I know we struggled to fit them in last week. I feel like maybe I discouraged you from doing them. I don't want to discourage you from doing them. I apologize. <laughs> there's still time to get us a few names if you want to make us say some crazy names, buddy. Yep. All right. Um. Let's see. Over unders for the Tulsa game. Passes thrown by quarterbacks not named CJ. So McCord, Miller, yours at 14 and a half. Under, under, under. That should be like one and a half. That should be like one and a half. I'm going under. I think Ohio State is going to attempt to prove something by putting up some huge points this weekend. Now, will they actually achieve that? I don't know, but I think they're going to keep CJ Stroud in there for a long time. And I also think Ryan Day does not want to. No, that's not true. I think it's pretty much out of the it would be McCord. So I just want to state that for the record, if someone comes in. And plays quarterback whose name is not CJ Stroud, it will be Kyle McCord. But even then, I feel like Kyle McCord is going to be handing the ball off a lot and 14 and a half feels just like a ton. Feels like a ton, okay. of, a ton of passes. Under, yeah. under, under. Um, touchdowns by the tight ends at 0.5. I'd say over. Typically in these kind of games, the underwhelming games, you start seeing more tight end touchdowns. So I'll say, I'll say one. I say there will be one tight end touchdown here. Yeah, it, if it was one and a half, I probably would say under because I wouldn't bet money on two, but. Yeah, I'll, I'll go absolutely go over here that a touchdown happens. I think CJ Stroud throws it. CJ Stroud honestly might throw like six touchdowns this game. Yep. One turnover of them could differ- go to a tight end. Turnover differential in favor of Ohio State at one and a half. Uh, wait, uh, Nomad brings up a good point. What if it's to to Gee, who's kind of a tight end, kind of a wide receiver? We're counting it as a tight end. We're counting Gee as a tight end. Yeah. All right. For the record, I'll see one and a half for turnovers. I'm going to go under. I'm going to go under. I, I, from what I've seen right now, I don't trust Ohio State to tur- to get turnovers that much. So I'm going to go under. One of the reasons why Tulsa lost that game to their FCS opponent was because they had three turnovers in that game. Like they had a lot more yardage. Again, one of the reasons why they lost it was because of turnovers. That being said, I have just a severe lack of faith in our defense right now to create two turnovers. I got to go under and that's that's that hurts me to say. It does. True freshman touchdowns at one and a half. I'm going to go over here. One from Travion and then one from another receiver somewhere. Or so just a receiver. Yeah, no, especially like I, I don't know how. I don't think they pull. I don't think they pull Stroud very quickly from the game if it does get out of hand. I do think if the game gets out of hand, they do start rotating those wide receivers in a bit more. So, yeah, I think Kyle nails this one for Henderson and another one for Marvin Harrison Jr. Or one of the other true rookie wide receivers. Yeah. Combined receiving yards for Alave and Wilson at 125 and a half over. 
Uber, over, over, over. Yeah. Ab- yeah, absolutely. That, that's an easy over. Amount of 20 plus yard plays given up by Ohio State's defense at three and a half. I love this number. Love this number here. I, I'm going to go under. I have to go under here. I, I can't stomach the idea of Tulsa getting four 20 plus yard plays over Ohio State. I, I'm going to say, I'm just going to say over just because uh, it's easy to throw a ball and be able to get 20 yards easily, I, I'd, go, I'd go over. By the way, in response to the wide receiver question about the combined yardage between Alave and Wilson at 125, uh, Stewart says you don't have to combine. Nomad said 125 each. And yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. And amount of OSU field goal attempts at two and a half. I'll go I, under. I think, I think two. I think two. So I'll go under. I would even say one because I feel like when Ohio State scores, it's going to be like 30 yard touchdowns. Yeah. Or at the end of the half. Yeah. That, I mean, that's why I allowed one. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, what are let's some get of our some other questions, questions here. Yes. Uh, Duncan from the Discord. What is the shortest tenure for a head coach? Don't count acting or interim head coaches. Didn't Georgia Tech once hire someone for like two weeks before they found out he lied on his resume? And then, of course, I think technically Greg Schiano signed with Tennessee. That's a thing that happened. Um, so I think technically Greg Schiano counts. Now, I, is there a clause in this question that said they had to coach at least one game? Um, in that case, you know, like Luke Fickle was not the interim head coach at Ohio State. A lot of people say, well, Luke Fickle is just the interim coach at Ohio State. No, you know, he wasn't. They gave him the title head coach. Larry Johnson was a acting head coach that that does not count. Come, hey, Nomad. And, and sportscasters, too, buddy. And sportscasters. Oh, no, wait, that's why he went to Tennessee. Yeah. No, there's, there's been some, even even recently. Uh, Does anyone remember the Georgia Lane, Tech? Lane, Georgia Lane, coach Lane Kevin was only at Tennessee for one year. That's true. Before he bolted. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. I forgot. And wasn't, didn't, uh, Narduzzi only spent one year at Pitt before. I'm not sure. Um, another one in the it's SEC. Not Narduzzi. Here, uh, um, screw it. Keep going forward. It's fine. Yeah. Another one in the SEC in 2012, John Smith from Arkansas. Okay. And then also, if you want to, if you want to look recently here, do, 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 looking at, Idaho had a coach. Um, Erickson was one year as well. Yeah. So there have been some one year coaches and then there have been some uh, never coached a game coaches. So yeah, Lovey, Lovey Smith was was at Illinois for a few years. Yeah, he was what, three years? I want to say three years. Don't look it up. We need to move on from this question. All right, cool. All right, uh, Buckeye Zach, should we be concerned that Kerry don't, Combs don't, is don't even in... Don't even entertain this question. All right. Uh, I see you, Buckeye, sorry, Zach. Buckeye Zach. You don't have any other questions, so we're moving on to Kabuto. What is your honest rankings of these OSU defenses from best to worst? 2018, 2020, 2021, so far. We, we just don't know about... 20, they've been two games so far, in 2021. So it's not... It's not an apt or fair comparison. Ohio State's offense sucked, sucked in 2014 through two games. Mm -hmm. And then we know how that ended. Mostly just because the offensive line sucked and then figured it out. It's amazing how that works. I just I'm not I'm not entertaining 2021. It's a part of that question yet. It's two games in. Let's take a deep breath. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, too soon to answer that. Uh, Buckeye Esquire. Yes, Gangland. Two horrendous games. 
But still, yeah. Ohio State in 2014 had two horrendous offensive games. People always point to Virginia Tech. But forget about Navy as the opener the week before in which they looked equally awful. Yep. All right, uh, Buckeye Esquire, can PG take over as the run-stopping linebacker? Maybe him on the field with Cody Simon and whoever they like as the big bullet, as as like the base? Um, Pallier uh, Gautier, I, I'm sorry, I know I'm mispronouncing that name. Hold on, I have the pronunciation guide in in here. No, Teote. Right? Neote Ote. Pala Pala E A. Pala E A. Neote Ote. There we go. I, I, I like him as a depth guy. He's not he's not some sort of big difference maker. He, he's not if you're looking for a fix to the defense, Neote Ote is is isn't that. With all due respect to him, he's not that. He he's not the He's not the answer to the question we're looking for. So, Stuart, I know this is partially tongue in cheek. Stuart asks down in the live chat, who will replace Ryan Day for his failures to fix the defense? I mean, obviously, Ryan Day is the head coach, but you do have to wonder. And again, I'm talking. At the end of the season, I'm talking postseason here. If Ryan Day does bring in like a a home run hire at defensive coordinator during the offseason, and if you bring in a home run hire, if you bring in a name guy to run the defense, then you have to hand over control to that guy. You can't bring in a let's say Kirby Smart. <laughs> <laughs> not Kirby Smart. That's not what I meant to say. Charlie Strong. It's the other guy with the descriptive last name. Let's say you bring in Charlie Strong to be the defensive coordinator. You can't bring in a guy like Charlie Strong and say, OK, run my defense. No, you bring in Charlie Strong to run Charlie Strong's defense. Otherwise, he doesn't mm. come in. Yep. As an example, yep. Corey, Ra yep. listen. Corey Raymond, you're. Out of the frying pan into the fire. Ohio State made a mistake hiring a cornerbacks coach with no defensive coordinating experience to run their defense once, and that experiment has gone poorly. Corey Raymond would just be phase two of that experiment. Mm -hmm. All right, Jared, we are over on time here, and we are out of questions. So let's go ahead and end today's episode. All right. Uh, yeah, that's the end of today's episode. Make sure to visit um, the sloopcast.com there. You can find links to all of our stuff, Instagram, Twitter, more importantly, because we're not either. We're not you know, on either of those platforms that much anymore. Um, check out our discord server. That's where we're at. If you want to if you want to come and talk to us, ask us questions, chat with us during the games. Discord discord.thesloopcast.com it's like a private social media server that um we keep a tight rein on and and make sure it doesn't get too toxic or chaotic or all of those other things that that social media ends up becoming so if you're looking for a respite from the toxicity of social media come join the discord server discord.thesloopcast.com uh and if you want to join these yahoos down here trying to down here down here trying to make us laugh while we record and doing all that other stuff uh join the discord or excuse me the patreon page uh it's only three dollars a month and it's it's like 32 dollars if you pay for the entire year up front so that's 12 so you save i want to say like something like 12 or 15 percent by paying for the entire year up front so if you just like oh, i don't want three dollars a month coming off of my credit you can just like do 32 bucks up front and then you'll be fine um, also, if you're looking to sponsor, we're, we, we'd be happy to take on a third sponsor. Um, watershed, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> land grant, it's alcohol. We've been drinking an alcohol sponsor would be nice. Uh, 
You can also sign up for that at patreon.thesloopcast.com. All right, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Hey, the crew win. The crew won. Yeah. Finally, uh, finally win. Offense, but they getting still some move. offense going. Yeah, it, they can't. It, it just is just a tough year. It's just a tough year just watching them offensively here. Hey, Stuart, we care. Support your local teams. <laughs> um, yeah, they just they just need to. Uh, <laughs> you troglodyte. They just need to get the offense going early. And dare I say, maybe put Zardes and Barry up in the front. I mean, that would that would make sense. Possibly. All right. That's all I got. We are over in time. So let's end it shared. That's it. You got nothing else. All right. Tonight's ending music. <laughs> I asked Kyle a question while he was drinking because I wasn't looking at the camera. Tonight's ending music will be by uh, one of my favorite bands in the Columbus area. They go by playing to vapors. Uh, the name of this song is called Machine Said Maybe. So you can check out if you like if you like this band or if you like this song, there's links down in the where the links are in the show notes or wherever else. So uh, you can you can do that. Check them out. They're great. Uh, give them a follow on Bandcamp and anywhere else you can find them. Add them to your playlist on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, wherever you listen to your music. So uh, this band's tremendous. I highly recommend sticking around. And if you're YouTube and you don't actually get this music at the end, I highly recommend you click that link and give this song a listen. It's it's great. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters once again. Kyle, this is Playing to Vapors. Thank you.